Hello folks, we're back again, and now we've got, Owen and I have a special guest. Owen's, we do. Owen's my typical special guest. Hey, <laughs> but here, here we have Paulo, and Paulo has uh, spent a lot of money on a new board game he'd like to tell us about. <laughs> well, Papa Paolo. I spent a lot of money on this. Six each. Relax the edition, everything in it. Uh, so you got, you got the all in? Yes, I have. Boy. And this is probably, maybe, the last game fulfilled by Mythic Games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a fair point, and I guess the jury's still out. This, uh, this game's had uh, quite the uh, 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 story journey uh, getting to you, correct? So, it has. Uh, gosh, so uh, all I kept hearing about this game recently was that everybody was posting online saying, oh my god, I cannot believe that I got this game, and I didn't expect for it to actually arrive. And uh, and Paolo is kind of in the same boat, right? Like yep. it's it's, it's yep. uh, uh, so. What was that whole uh, issue then with the game getting and people? Give us a little right. background of that whole story sure. of what, what happened with it. I try to keep it as uh, you know simple as possible. Unfortunately, this campaign happened midway through the pandemic, yeah. which meant that uh, companies like you know Mythic Game wasn't the only one. There's been plenty of companies that have had issues with shipment, which led to increased cost. And unfortunately, when you have multiple campaigns on Kickstarter at the same time where your bottom line suddenly disappears, it gets tricky to deliver. In this particular case, the company required extra money to deliver the game. Unfortunately, some people weren't happy with the extra money because it was unfortunately substantial. I think I ended up paying twice over what I originally paid for Kickstarter. So it is fair enough, but uh, game's <laughs> here. So... It did arrive. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, and you did that. Yeah, it took took some dedication uh, by the backers and by the, I guess the people making the game too. But geez, man, that's tough. You know, like so. All in all, you spent about twice as much as what you originally mm. were told to, to pledge for it. But don't tell my wife. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't say how much. I mean, twice as much as two dollars is only four. So, <laughs> yeah, it it's between four dollars and, and and a lot more. Yeah, uh, it is a very. It feels like a deluxe, uh, a deluxified Kickstarter game. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've got uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of plastic, a lot of plastic components, but also mm -hmm. a really cool uh, furniture. Yes, there's also yeah. a tray over there of furniture that I didn't show you, but it's basically like all that you see, but it's. The same like this, solid plastic. Oh, so they did. We got it, plastic did, versions did, of all this yeah, too. Oh, cool. Uh, let me get. Um, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. You can grab it. So wow, well, so that. like plastic versions of of each. I was wondering that actually when we were playing, if they did some kind of a. But this, see. these almost look prettier to start off with. But man, it is nice having some three D models. Wow. Right. You don't have to glue these together to begin with, but you have to paint them. The, these uh, cardboard ones we were talking about are a little fiddly because every time you go to pick them up, they just start to fall apart on you unless you were to glue them down. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, with those, uh, yeah, there's no, no need to. Of course, you know, unless you're Sean and you're somebody that paints all their miniatures <laughs> and, and makes it look super pretty, this would look like a ton of gray plastic on the table compared to these Boy, already being yep. I, I think but. mine would probably, sp I, would, I would build those... Those cardboard ones, I don't know if I'd be pressed to even want to try to paint the rest yeah, of this stuff. I know. It's really nice, though. Yeah, yeah, that is nice. So this is one thing that I have to say about this, right? You know, spending a lot of money on this game, fair enough. I'm a fan of the video game, so this was kind of a given for me. Uh -huh. And sure, it is unfortunately the most expensive game in my collection as of today. And uh, am I happy about that? Nah, not really, but fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Having said that, though, this doesn't feel like... Other games that, in my opinion, are super highly priced for what you get, like, we can name names, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can we... Uh, food Chain Madness. Food Chain oh, Madness? Jeez. Right, yeah. anyway, so, unfortunately, well, there, there mean, are certain games... That's in, in a nutshell, right? You see yeah. what I mean, yeah. right? Like, yeah. there's games that have a very high price point, and mm -hmm. when you open the box, you're like, great, but this is, you know below Monopoly money in terms of quality of the paper, of the cardboard, everything mm -hmm. is just, not gr like, it's fair enough, right? So opinions, this is mine. In this case, the game has a high price point, but there's like 90, 90, 92, something, 19 round miniatures, and each one is different. Mm -hmm. And 
Sean, you paint miniatures, you can tell that these are not like, you know, shoddy board games, generic standard miniatures, like for example. No, they, they're they really highly detailed, and this is very typical of Mythic games. Mm -hmm. uh, I put them right up there with um, the Solomon Kane miniatures as far as the, the quality and stuff. They they look really, yeah. really well detailed and stuff. Yeah, Plus yeah. they're unique, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're all different. That's There's no repeats. That's nope. something that's a big thing in miniature right. games. Usually they kind of... Like it's one way to cut the budget is just to yeah. make the same of one that? particular type. Valhalla game with uh, like Blood Rage. Yes, in Blood yeah. Rage you have like one shaman or whatever it's called, and you have like ten or twelve troops that are all the same. Sure. Uh, yeah. Right. And that's fair enough. And when you hear arguments that miniatures drive up price, you're like, yeah, because you need to hire a sculptor that sculpts them. Yeah. In this case, <laughs> they sculpted ninety minis plus sure tables and chairs, but. <laughs> That's fair enough. There are lamps and everything. Um, right yeah, here. that's that's what I was noticing. <laughs> like, I, I kind of I kind of wanted to look see. Look at the a couple water cooler. Than... Look at this guy. Oh yeah. man! So you really start making that look like a serious. <laughs> <laughs> and if you really want to spend some time, I have the pool table. Oh, that's cool. Oh no way! Yeah, I want to show that. So let alone the fact that Sean said that there's a lot of plastic, it also feels like it's not just you know waste of plastic. You know these components yeah, are. They look good, mm -hmm. the cardboard looks good, and you know, everything. The player aids, they're filigree. Yeah, they've got, yeah. That they, wingspan they, they, that's and color. The first thing I said when I got these player aids, yeah, that, that wingspan linen finish kind of feel to them. That's really nice, it's kind of like that. that. And their, uh, their player aids are really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that's some, this really helped us play this first game. Mm -hmm. it, it lay, there's just not a lot of icons. To, to to figure out which mm -hmm. I appreciate like sometimes you get, you go into a game and it's like yeah. it's like learning another language just to get all the iconography but it's 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 really simple everything's laid out all the different little specialized weapons you've got are very nicely laid out look at this little short list of like rules and stuff mm -hmm. for the different that's that, I mean it, I, if too many bones was like this I'd play it more <laughs> than twice a year yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's been generous yeah <laughs> And, I love that. And it's nice because, I mean, this game's not, it's not overly complicated. The teach, it, it takes it takes a minute to get through the teach of the game just because you do have to describe all, I mean, it's important to know all of these terms to start off with. And you kind of have to, regardless of whether you're playing defense or offense, you do have to kind of become aware of what everybody can do and how each one of these little pieces works. But once once you've heard it once... And you, of course, you play it out once. It, it, it clicks pretty quick, and and then but there it's is easy a clock. To, there is there is a there is a clock. Yes, uh, that clock means you got to know stuff, and yeah. I and I think that that's why that's so simple, mm -hmm. don't you? Right. Yeah. It is a uh, well. So was that now? Okay, we played the first game of this, and we we did not use the clock. It was a learning game. And we played another game using the clock to add all of the intense uh, <laughs> pressure yeah, of, of trying to get through the game with a, a five-minute timer, or an, or, and yep. it was a 7.30-minute timer, <laughs> uh, which was nice. Um, <laughs> but uh, but when we stopped, we, so we had times, though, where we were stopping just to look at the rules, and I guess that was just something we were doing, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not like a, no, like a not game, game it, mechanic yeah. thing. No, no. So... Although they say, like, at some point in the rules, you got to be fair about it. So if somebody goes, yeah. like, hey, hang on a minute, I don't remember this rule, you can just pose right. and go to it. Yeah, so you got some leeway with that. But that I think that, that timer, that crunch of that, that, I mean, that's like a key mechanism of this game is that there's that real-time element. You know, you pause when you shoot, you know, if you go, because shooting, you got to go through some dice rolls and stuff like that. And, and that's, you know, not using up your, your brain power of what you're doing on the board itself. But... Uh, you, you do have to, uh, I was, I'm kind of losing my train of thought. <laughs> you do, you, you got to keep at it. Yeah, you do have to, you do have to keep at it. Definitely. <laughs> you yeah. can't, you definitely can't linger on and, and it, it, it takes that, uh, it adds a lot of stress, Yeah. which is, which I feel like is thematic right. you know, yeah. to, the, to the kind of scenario. So, so you're not just sitting there in your armchair. Uh, quarterbacking these these so, guys around you've got to yeah if anybody has it. played a video game you basically have three yeah. minutes of time to put around right give or take and uh um it's not a long time it feels like it isn't but it isn't so mm -hmm. 
uh, in this particular, you know, in the board game, I had some, you know, worries about going into it because how can you replicate a video game into a board game, especially if this is a first person shooter. I played like a couple of uh, FPS inspired board games like Adrenaline is one of them, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. And that's kind of like, sort of like ripping off Quake of the good old times or like mm -hmm. Quake Arena or like a real tournaments. Sure. But that is essentially a Euro game that has been made, you know, dressed up as a, an FPS. Mm -hmm. And that works because it's a board game first and a video game later. Mm -hmm. This comes from a video game, right? And how right. do you translate certain mechanics? And I think that the designers have done an incredible job with this. Being a fan of the video game, uh, there are certain things that I look at and I'm like, of course, this makes so much sense. Like, you're leaning past the corner, of course you're protected. Wait, you're throwing a gadget? No, there's no line of sight. You can't do that. And uh, it just it just works for me. It doesn't help that they trounce me. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, granted, we, we, get, we got we got an extra 50% more time being the defenders, so that's where I was saying the 7.30 versus the 5 minutes. And 100% more people. Yeah. And I roll, I so roll better than I think I've yeah. rolled in the yeah, past 20 two, years or so. And the, two, and the two brains, I thought that was going to get in the way a little bit more, because like, sometimes that's like when you play a solo game, and you're you've got too you know too many brains sitting there asking questions back and forth. You got a timer. That's why they gave you the extra fifty percent time. <laughs> yeah, but you, I think that's why they make you choose like your operators too. Like right. you get like a set of operators that work together. Yeah, you have to make the decisions as uh, you know each individual person. So you got five people against five people is the standard game. That would, I don't know if it goes. Up more than that ever or not no no, no. like the the game is meant to be played in like five operators versus five yeah and this was originally uh, just 1v1 yeah okay this is a two players board game which to me falls into like a niche of a niche because mm -hmm. how many people buy board games to play just the two of them you know board games normally have a fairly high count at this five. at this level yeah. too right. yeah especially considering the price tag right mm -hmm. yeah uh, patchwork i think is two players it's a two players game and it costs like what $20, $25. Oh, yeah. Right? It's yeah. pretty cheap. Yeah. Like, I do have another shame game of mine, which is uh, um, Claustrophobia 1640 something. I can't remember. And it's another oh. mini game. It's a two players game. It was expensive at the time. And at the time, I was like, I'm not going to buy a game that is really expensive just for two. But then I saw the minis and I was like, yeah, I gotta get this. That was on my try before we buy list. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'll I bring remember, it. I remember that coming up. Yeah. So. I have it. Claustrophobia is great. I played it like three times over the last five years. It's fine. You know, life happens. But that was for me, you know, like the limit. $80 for a game, $90 for a two players game to me was just an outlier. Mm. Now this, never mind the price because it's out there. Uh, <laughs> um, I as keep wanting to ask the price, but I'm trying to be... No, it's fine. You can ask me out of camera. Etiquette, so. etiquette, etiquette, <laughs> I don't yeah, want this yeah. to be on record because I won't be happy when I say it. Yeah, all right. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> put it this way, it's much less than what this game is going on for on eBay. Okay, okay so if we went on eBay today to try to buy this... The last I checked, which was when I got the game, you know, like some people buy Kickstarters just to shift them straight away. Oh, yeah. I saw it for like one zero 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 dollars Oh. Like a grand. And that's... You know, it might that was been, an all in, or is yeah, it... this was like the same edition that I had. Yeah, like all in, everything with it, all the mm -hmm. packages, all the you know the their schmazzy fancy. Oh yeah, um, the yeah, but that was just an asking price. There's no telling if they. That's sold what I mean. Like that, yeah. I, I doubt that somebody will be like, yeah, that seems like a good price. How much would someone have to love Six Siege? <laughs> no, that's. <laughs> no, I mean, I can see if 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 you got caught up in the campaign because you loved it and stuff, and it seemed probably real reasonable at first yeah yeah and then and then you just want to get the game so you continue yeah. that's that's one thing yeah you well, got drug you got drugged down the, the lane with that yeah but uh but to be like oh i missed the campaign and i missed uh, all the extra times they gave me to buy that yeah. and all this other stuff and then you come in at the end and try to get it boy i believe that the uh, you know, the website, Mythic Games website may still have copies because, you know, I think they produce maybe a touch more than what they had the money for or maybe some people at the end were like, no, I don't want it anymore. You never know. So they may still have copies, but don't take my word for it. They may not, right? Mm -hmm. okay. It's been already a few weeks since yeah. they started to be delivered in the, in the U.S. at least. Well, so so we were uh, talking about this, though, so as like, so 
we so we played a three player game. This does have three player game mechanic. How how does this go? Does this go up to four players? It does. Or more? Yeah. Is so it just at four? Is that then? What we just yeah. It okay. plays. It's normally designed for a one v one, and then you can do two v one or two v two. Yeah. The two v one is a hybrid because you know mm -hmm. the two v two would be exactly like you guys play but two teams. Mm -hmm. So two play. So two players have two operators each and one shared, and vice versa. The right. other team is the same. In the game that we played 2v1, I had like the full complement of the team that I could maneuver, and I had two and two each, and one share operator in the middle. So, does it work 2v1? I think it sort of does. Yeah, you know, so yeah, because that's what I wanted to talk more about, because like, I, I think that we, you know, having the extra 50% time on it, and the fact that we're only operating two people a piece, and then we have this third extra one that we're kind of like, you know, either he can operate it on his... Or I can operate on my turn. Uh, that that seemed like a. Um, it it almost seemed like the person who is playing the one side, you know, the one, the the two, the two, the one that's playing one or whatever, has got to be pretty up on the game. Like it seems like that would have been really good. Like as you play the game more and you're more experienced, and then you say, okay, how about you two guys go against me? Because it's a lot to have to to contemplate and being able to focus on two people. I mean, I think. After, like, you said you've gotten nine, how many different operatives can you... About you, 90, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, 90, wow, 40, like, I think weird. it's 90, I can't remember, yeah. like, something silly like that. That'd be really hard to memorize. We played it with all the standard uh, characters, so you could kind of get a good idea of these pretty quickly after a few games. Um, but man, like, I, I think it definitely helped us being able to both split up a couple characters, so we could be like, oh yeah, my guys can do this True. and that, and then kind of formulate that we could we could kind of break up our team and formulate our plan plus having 50 percent more time i feel like it it i could kind of see and, and they have uh but they have but they have options for you whenever we're playing two player like we could have played with just five minutes against right. five minutes so there's a there's one thing that you know as you guys may have other board games in your house right yeah one of the things that i that i find you know the funniest about board game boxes specifically mm -hmm. is when you look at them you're like Oh yeah, 40 minutes per player, and you end up playing it, and it's never 40 minutes per player, it's like <laughs> an hour and a half. Yeah. You know, when you read something about like Twilight Imperium, it may say like, oh, an hour per player, like, no, no it isn't, it's, uh, <laughs> right. it's yeah. a day and a bit. So, in this case, I think that the box of six each shows you exactly how long the game takes, which is, uh, I'm not sure I can do this, anyway, it's over here. It's 60 minutes. Yeah. Why... This is one of the few, if not the only box of the game that I have that doesn't lie. It's because, as Owen has mentioned, this is a game that plays with an app, which, of course, you know, that's polarizing. Fair enough. But the only thing that the app does is it acts as a clock. Yeah, you could get, if you're really hardcore, you could get sand timers. <laughs> you get five-minute uh, sand timers. Or a chess well, no, clock. I guess you couldn't stop them, though. I get what well, you could put them on their side. I think get, a chess clock will be fine. Yeah, right, yeah, you know, right. you, you start to stop it, start to stop So it's stop. only the timers that go on the app. Yeah. A wind-up chess clock. Well, that's perfect. Yeah. Because that's, that's okay, here's here's the problem. <laughs> any, any game that's got an app, like I've got an iPad over there that mm -hmm. won't play YouTube anymore. Oh, gosh, okay. So, uh, like, eventually... Like yeah. your older electronics won't uh, age out. Well, yeah, they'll age yeah. out, and if Mythic Games starts stops putting out updates for their yeah. app, then eventually it'll age out and that fall is true. off. You're right. So if it's just the timer, mm. psh, no problem. Yeah. Also, yeah, use it while you can, and yeah. there's also like an uh, an option for a no timer edition of the game because they factor that in, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, instead of having, you know, uh, one of the things about the timer is that it gives you. Uh, limit right you have so many minutes of time to perform your actions and you move to the other round either if you move your characters or not the version without the app i just had a brief read on you know on the, on the book mm -hmm. and it changes the game slightly instead of having time you have like action tokens and if you, you know remember the challenge there's a there's a part of the game that focuses on the fact that if someone calls a shot and you think they're wrong you can challenge them mm -hmm. if you're right you get a benefit you get extra time and they lose time one way or the other. In the uh, non-app version of it, there's a way to basically do that. The other player gets extra activations or something, mm -hmm. so there's okay. still a reward, but mm -hmm. it seems to work. 
Allegedly. I haven't tried it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I could totally see you playing this game as, like, almost a miniatures little war game, sort yeah. of, like, you know, which is, I guess when you break it down, it kind of is like that, but that time, I feel, I feel like you need that timer. I think that yeah, for sure. that's, that's, that's a key component uh, for, for this game and what really, um, you know, makes like, it. Like makes it feel more like you're playing the real FPS, you yep. know, digital game that you have that intensity, of that adrenaline, quickly running thematic. in there. Yeah, you can't think about too. You can't sit there like when you're playing a first-person shooter and say, okay, like he's over there. I'm gonna sit here and step two spots over here, turn, nope. get posted up, get ready for him, all this stuff, and wait. Now let me back that up and change yep. it this way or whatever. Like you don't have that time, so you you need you need to have that that th and the thing starts beeping at you too yep. whenever it starts getting kind of close to your time. Uh, so that's that's fun. It, 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 and then if you just run out of time, you're just, you just lose it. the rest of your actions. Like so in my first you, round you, when you I thought, can't think too hard. I've got five characters to activate. I've got plenty of time. And then I activated the second one and I was like, how much time have I got? Oh, what? Mm -hmm. And my time was going and I was like, well, you guys are not moving this round. That's, uh, <laughs> that's great. This is going to be amazing. Yeah, which I was curious about because in general, I don't think I'm um, uh, one of those people that's attracted to real time games. I mean, there's some that are fun, like some of those like silly games that are like, oh, Magic like the five Maze. minute, yeah, Magic Maze, five minute dungeon. Uh, what's the escape? You know, okay. so there's, oh, yeah. there's some of those that are like, you know, just silly little games like, yeah. ah, if we mess up, whatever, you know, it's, yeah. it's a quick, <laughs> silly game. It's supposed to be silly and fun. Well, uh, but then there's what's the what's the what's the one that Stonemeyer did? Um, there pop, was, pop, uh, story of the was it Pendulum? Pendulum. Pendulum. Yeah, yeah that didn't look that that it. didn't look uh, attractive to me. I saw uh, it on a fifty percent off discount table. Yeah, yeah. and maybe it would be it's fun, time. but it it, it, it was Sand timers. It seemed like you were putting a timer in there just okay. to put a timer in there, and it, it was a little more serious of a game than the the. the sand silly. timers are finicky and and fudgy. Uh, yeah, so so that but this works well, and and I think it's like really again integral to the to the experience that you're having in the game as to to have that i think you know i remember there was a board game where like sand timers all over i can't remember what it was i think it was like medically themed like you're supposed to well, never mind it was like an er an uh -huh. operation to different times and you were supposed to yeah like sand timers all over the place oh wow oh, again geez. for hospitals i mean uh, i think as you i think you're right like this yeah. is a game that without the timer will still be interesting and it'll be a different experience because like the first game we played you know no timers mm -hmm. you just Took it easy, waited that remover, like, well, if I do this, then he's going to do that. Maybe I won't do it. But Then it's a puzzly skirmish. Right. <laughs> kind yeah. of th that way. And it's an okay one at that, right? Like, yeah. 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 Right. There's, there's yeah. enough depth, in my opinion, that it feels like even if you don't have the timer, you still get something out of it. Right. right. But then when the timer kicks in, Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Be because you can't, th and then like you make a mistake and you have to just go with it and that kind of thing. And, and granted, like it's a, it, it, yep. wolf, it makes the game quicker so you can play multiple games because it's very easy to get bogged down in thought processes. As 60 Sean, minutes. As Sean uh, is uh, fully familiar with, with me playing games with him. But, yeah. uh, I have no get, thought process. Yeah. This is, it felt really natural. To <laughs> just Sean, Sean's the alpha partner for this game. Uh, but, Breach. <laughs> and, uh, granted, well, we, were we, breached. we had, you know, we had some, you know, we had, like there are rolls of the dice. There's going to be luck involved with it. But when you're playing something that is moving fairly quickly, like I felt like I could play like three, you know, games of this in a row, or even up to like five, maybe if you really just like, you know, got some people that's new game really into it and they want to sit and pl you know play it a bunch and really feel it out. Because it's uh, that that was the, my first thoughts when we were playing the the no timer game mm -hmm. was that you need to start developing reflexes mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. and, sure. and and learning like okay like we got to get over here do this run out because you can't again first person shooter you can't do that uh, kind of overly you know thought out you have to be constantly moving and and just going and doing stuff and and then you know like I said we had some like really easy uh, some dice rolls that were really in our favor. And some that weren't in Palo's favor. They were not. And as soon as he was like, he's like, oh, maybe we can play this again right after. Uh, which we totally could have. <laughs> be because nice. the game be ended nice. pretty quick. I mean, we, we finished that in a total. I mean, it wasn't 30 minutes that we finished that game probably. Um, I don't think it was. Think? Maybe like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did it like, it was over by the end of the third round. Yeah. 
So yeah. the game lasts a maximum of like five, potentially six rounds. We did it half an hour, right, yeah. give or take. And and I really I like. Mean, I I lost in half an hour. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, again, uh, there were there were dice rolls and things, and some of the stuff is like neat because so you've got five characters, and each one of these characters has like a little hidden token on it. Now uh, they got two of them. So um, when he's setting up the we. So we're as as the blue characters, we're the people that are attacking coming into this this building. And so he's already set up and posted up and we don't know exactly where he's at. He's got surveillance, he knows where we're at. But with these these tokens, uh he can put one of his uh characters over here, wherever, you know, and have and then but but the same name somewhere else on the board and we don't know where he's at at any point and it really I, I like that a lot. So there's it's almost like a slight bit of hidden movement at that sense because not only that, he can fake us out the whole time until his characters are revealed. He can just be like, oh, I'm going to do all my movement with this character, and then his real character is somewhere completely different. So that, I thought that was kind of a neat a neat way to, to simulate you not knowing what's behind the doors, um, yep. because thematically uh, we shouldn't know what's right behind a yep. wall or whatever. And man, all this is plastic. Like, yep. these, aren't, these aren't cardboard tokens. These mm -hmm. are hard plastic tokens. Are there 90 of these? Uh, no, <laughs> there's 100. No. no so, yeah, you're right. There's 90 because there's like half operators. 90 are, pairs. Oh, so there'd be 180. No, 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 no. Yeah. You only have these for the defenders, which is about like half of the Oh, all the 45? orange. Oh, okay. Twice that. So 90. Oh, that's about 90 right, tokens, right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So you have like the square tokens too for mm. the overwatch of the entryways like these. These are another like, you know, 90 of these. So there's a lot yeah. of like, okay, if there's one thing that I have to say, there's a couple of things that... Um, as much as I'm willing to love this game, either I like it or not, because, you know, uh, sunken cost fallacy and all that, um, there are a couple of things that I have to say that are not, they're, you know, slight criticism, and, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is, right? Um, the, the, the base game comes with all these tokens, of course, it comes with, like, not all these operators, it comes with, like, I think it's, like, 15, 30, maybe 30, or maybe 40, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but there's, like, there's less, right? The all-in complete pledge has all the other expansions, which are meant to replicate the first five years of the video game. You know, uh -huh. with all the DLCs and extra <laughs> characters. So that's how you end up with having so many. And uh, moreover, all the expansions of the all-in add multiple maps. So the base game has two uh, locations. There's this one and the back of it. And there are, in you know, for video game terms, this is console. The other side is uh, uh, clubhouse, I think. And then there's in the extra bits, there's two extra maps, which makes it, well, two extra boards, which makes it four extra maps. So you can play with six different locations. There's three game modes per location. So there's, you know, tons of replayability. You know, before I managed to play everything with this, yeah, it's never going to happen. But <laughs> having said that, uh, as I said, the base game comes with these tokens in cardboard. And they're good. It's, you know, like this. It's good, mm. good cardboard. It doesn't feel flimsy. It doesn't feel, you know, cheap. The finish is nice, the you know, the art design is clear, everything makes sense the moment you explain it. Mm -hmm. As Sean mentioned, the iconography is not terrifying like in a Lacerda game where you just look and you're like, I'm sorry, whoa, I don't I don't speak this. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting into those Lacerda games. And they're great by the way, I love them. But they're a different experience. It's uh dipping my toes in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm up to here. Yeah, I got one two weeks ago. I haven't even gotten in there yet. I'm <laughs> working on yeah, it. Yeah, I felt like I felt like it was really watered down for, to accommodate that mm. real time -ness. Right. Having said that, uh, the criticism that I have is that although these tokens, you know, the deluxe plastic uh, acrylic, whatever, mm. are they look nice. I've noticed when I was just you know sorting things out in the in the different boxes that for some reason it seems that like the uh, the quality of the prints on the plastic tokens is slightly inferior to the quality of the cardboard tokens. Oh, really? It kind of looks like, you know, they're slightly smidged a bit. I don't think it's, it's not a big deal, right? It's just that by oh, doing yeah, this, see that, yeah. you kind of notice that are maybe like slightly, you see what I mean? Yeah, right? yeah, they're a little, it's a little staticky. So it right, kind of exactly. kinda, kinda looks like there's a bit of... Uh, and I a, don't know if it's because of... graininess to it. Yeah, I don't know if it's because it, of like, I think there's a, a there's a texture on this plastic. Right. The game has so much, you know, plastic that could have been just replaced with cardboard. Like these, these are just standees for cameras. The cameras look nice. The standees nice. What does this give it? It just gives it a bit of like three dimensionality to the board. Mm -hmm. And when you play a game with miniatures, in this particular case where you have to deal with like line of sights, obstacles, all sorts of things happening on the map, I think it helps. Right? Yeah. There's plenty of games. Again, the one that I mentioned before, Claustrophobia. 
great game, amazing miniatures, where you're playing on like, you know, square bo uh, boards that sort of like lock together. And it is, you know, the moment you put your head to the side, you see the minis and everything is just flat, right? Right. And I'm not saying that it takes away from the experience, because that's the experience that I've always had, but this adds to Oh, it. yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, having a 3D environment, feeling like, you know, like it makes sense when you've got coverage because you've literally got something in between you, you've got a desk in between you and the other person so I mean like that that uh, and I, I really like the way that these little wall pieces are because these are uh, simulating that you've got something sitting up on a wall so this is just some clear piece and this is the camera attached to the wall I like that a lot and these and all those little special rules printed yeah, on yeah they've got the little symbols printed on it looks like they just put a sticker yeah, Did you? I put a sticker yeah, you, yeah so sorry you, poor job so, <laughs> <laughs> and this is the you know on the reference board you see them over here the iconography it's just super clear mm -hmm. yeah so that that works uh, really well and I mean again you know we, we if I was to play this again I would probably like I would love to get out all of this 3d furniture because I even noticed I feel like I noticed the cardboard pool table somewhere maybe maybe I didn't maybe I'm imagining that but actually seeing one <laughs> sitting out why do i feel like i actually saw a cardboard piece? Oh, anyways th th this is really cool you know it's like having all these pieces though out on the on on the board um it's like so i, I was sending pictures of uh, uh osworn when i first set that up i was sending that to to, to sean because i i was like man like you know you could have these little flat cardboard pieces and even that they had them you know standing up the flat cardboard pieces but gosh, it, it really uh, it's much more immersive if you've got the three D pieces, just like a lot of these games are. There's something about that. Lot, yeah. There's something about it kind of coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes the board seem. I don't know. It, I mean, it, it's like when you play forty k, right, or like right. another miniature game. Right. You can play on like you know a white surface with nothing in it and just a piece of cardboard here and there, or you can just play with amazingly airbrushed terrain. Does it take away from the experience yeah. if you play one more over the other? No, but does it, the other one improve over the first one? No doubt. Right? Yeah, yeah, and and these and all these components again, really nice. I really like these these kind of smoke <laughs> bomb spots, smoke. so you can uh, you know smoke out these areas. All of these these plastic chits that we were talking about. Not only are they like you know got some extra stuff printed on, they feel nice because it just feels like a more substantial piece. But they do have uh, a little bit of uh, uh, 3D ness to these chits themselves. They've got indentions on them the the um the, the the little armor pieces the little splats to show yep. your wounds have got raised up uh pieces on them as well it, it's not much but it's a little bit like even these these tokens that show these are uh for what when you're looking down these little wells cool. at the people yeah. from, from up above down yep. below you can go up the second level and kind of snipe down it below even these have some little raised up pieces on them that just i don't know i i really like that i think that that makes them if the print is a little bit off it's it's again i didn't even notice it till no till yeah, yeah. just pointed it out because i was looking uh, at, I'm it, like at, that. at it well i was looking at it at a distance he was pulling out all of his i was pulling them out and putting them back i was like what is oh okay <laughs> but uh but even at a distance i was i was noticing the 3d nature of the chits themselves and thought that that was just a really nice touch it all has a very uh a premium feel otherwise other than the little bit of, of graininess again on, yeah. on these these images now, I my like second criticism that I was mentioning before is, and this is again, opinion, light criticism, not a big deal, maybe a bit more, but this is, right, you guys play this game with the, we play with like the five starting, or the ten starting characters for the game, and as mm -hmm. we mentioned, with the expansions and all, there's like 90 or so, and the permutations are <laughs> many, right, so do I believe that in that massive stack of characters, there's definitely like a combination that works better than others for sure right you know there's probably a chance that not every character is balanced properly for this particular game some may more yeah. may work better on certain maps and certain others so does that mean that if you play you know over and over and over and over again you get to the point that you play with all the characters right and then you're like oh i'm just gonna play with one two three four five because i know these ones are the best one out of all of them it's a possibility. Now, is that a real possibility? I doubt it, because that means this is the only game you have. 
you're really young and you live on a deserted island. Oh. And uh, you're willing to play both sides. Oh, you and I, I you and your brother are going to yeah, play you it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Do it until you know, the end I, of the days. I mean, maybe because this is going to, you know, possibly be a little a bit limited, you know, limited on, on the reach of people. Very. But I, I, I would uh, not be surprised at all if you start seeing some spreadsheets of oh, the great. best characters and the rankings. And I've seen, I saw him do that for Arcadia Quest. Which is I don't know if you're yeah. familiar with really? it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a silly, I played chibi, it. it's, it's good. A silly chibi dice throwing. Uh, just, <laughs> it's fun. It's though. just a, it's a si real silly game, and and all these little characters are like you know they're, they're, there's not there's nothing super strategic about it, any yeah. of them, and there are people that have put like hardcore rankings and tiers of all the different characters for that. So I, I bet you, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's that's gonna happen. Having said that, on this. like, you know, this is another thing that I have to say, which is, you know, uh, if somebody were to ask me, can I recommend this game? I don't have an answer yet because yeah. the, unfortunately, as I said before, this is, you know, uh, the DNA of this game is a two players game, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. It works with three and four, but I think this game shines best with two players, right? Mm -hmm. When everybody has the same amount of time. And you deal like you know one v one on a on a fair and equal balance approach. Moreover, I think this game has you know a level of complexity that is not super high, right? There's much more complex games out there, but it's still you know not the easiest. So as you guys, it said, takes you know, a little time. It just takes it a little that that initial teach takes a bit of time. It's not like. Like yeah, it's not it's 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 you not a less heard a game like you were saying. Right. You know, it's not it's nothing that's it's not a. I mean, I don't know what we put this as a. I mean, it's probably kind of comes out to like a medium weight game, maybe. maybe I'd say I'd maybe, say maybe even like. Oh, that I don't even know if it'd be. Oh, I was just gonna say I don't know if it'll be middle of the middle weight on medium weight games or not, but it's it's uh it's you not know, any higher than that, I no, don't think. No, you know. absolutely, I agree. Like in my case, this sits in like you know the medium to light. Yeah. For rules complexity, mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, for like quantity of rules, it's it's a hard medium. As in, uh, as we mentioned before, the iconography is clear. The number of actions your characters can do is relatively limited. But you know, multiply that by five characters. You got to know what the other team can do, and you have limited time because the time pressure is on you. All these things sort of like come together and uh, and make it an interesting game a tense game for sure but it may be a game that is you know if you're a fan of the base game or the source material you're probably going to like this as i do i don't see anything wrong with it i think they did an amazing job in translating it if you're not a fan of the base game and you think this you know you want to start with like a two players game, you know sort of like a scare machine war yeah, maybe. I don't know. I think there's like easier games to approach that genre with. And even if that's a criticism, I don't think it's a harsh criticism. I mean, sure, I can't say, yeah, go and buy this if you're looking for like a beginner's two players, you know, mm -hmm. experience. Well, you know what? I, the, there's, a, there's a problem with this game. And that it's going to be very difficult to get to sure. get a copy of it. Oh yeah, at a reasonable price. Yeah, that's the problem. It, 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 it's unfortunate that the mm -hmm. this happened with Mythic. The, all the all the problems mm -hmm. that have caused this not to come out and be widely available. Because yeah, because I tell you what, if this was a normal run, mm -hmm. and there was a basic version of this, mm -hmm. I would just psh, buy it. Okay, instant buy it. You know, because uh, even good. I can I can say that this is this is so different, unique. Uh, especially if you play two player a lot, like mm -hmm. like we do, uh, like I've got all these three player yeah, games I, I mean, can't get played. <laughs> but they're, um, yeah, I, if if it was that like that, but I'm afraid that there's only going to be so many so copies, right? My understanding is that if I remember this rightly from like the Discord conversations on the Mythic Games, you know, Discord channel, and the when this was being, you know. When they were asking for the contribution of extra money and people were like but how many do you need to actually go to print and numbers were turned out at first and then some other numbers came out and i believe i think like four thousand copies of this were printed in the english language hmm. i can't remember if anything else has been printed like you know spanish or german or chinese i can't i hmm. you know, don't take my word for it 
But yeah, like this wasn't going to be like a massive game to begin with. Because right. the Kickstarter campaign, I had like 10,000 or so, 11,000, you know, subscribers for it, which means 10, 11,000 copies of the game plus some extra to sell in the stores or like some of the stores or the Kickstarters, you know, mm. you never know. Having said that, that, yeah, this is definitely not going to be, for now at least, a game that is going to be widely available or going to reprints straight away, right? Because yeah. unfortunately for Mythic Games, they do have many other campaigns still mm. under, you mentioned Anastir. Yeah, monster was it Monster Apocalypse? Just monster, yeah, Monster Apocalypse, Anastir. I think these comp these campaigns are going ahead mm. somehow, right? And it may be that Mythic Games is going to be able to just come out on top, right? People will be paying the contributions whenever these will be ready, mm. and uh, they will be able to get out of this quagmire. Mm. Unfortunately, it is true that uh, many people that were part of this campaign and the Darkest Dungeon campaign before this uh, got pretty upset, like, reasonably, sure, like, you know, you, you support the game on Kickstarter, then the world goes through, you know, some issues, and then suddenly you really want your game. I mean, I get it, but be reasonable. I know this is going to get me in trouble, but at the same time, <laughs> you can cut that out. <laughs> you know? And it in post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, having said that... Um, it is unfortunate that the way that you know people dealt with this and these you know the company mm. has become pretty toxic, and I fear that unfortunately many people will remember the yeah. negative feels about this. Having it, and this, in my opinion, considering everything that this went through, I think this they just blew it out of the park, right? Because the mm -hmm. components, the gameplay, everything is in the quantity of stuff is just bonkers, right? For the price. That they said at the beginning this was going to be like this was going to be really tight for them to make a profit because with all the stuff they made I, i'm surprised they could have kept it in, you know in a positive way but mm. uh do i you know nevertheless uh put it this way if you go on board games geek and have mm. a look at this game now i think it scored like one or two out of ten five i don't remember Is it oh really ten? right like Oh, yeah, but they tanked it and the reviews. Right. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like the scores, it and... the scores were given before the game even made it. To yeah, play. and that was just unfortunately because a lot of people got upset and yeah. got really angry. And to to yeah. be fair to everybody, uh, it cannot be denied that Mythic Games communication during you know the difficult times of this game campaign wasn't great oh wasn't that's the, yeah that's the worst because like man like so many of these campaigns could like solve a lot of issues by just putting out more yeah, communication just... and talking about their issues like they did that like i, I mentioned those i know osworn was right in the middle of all right. that too and they had like it they, like people were so happy with them even with their problems like they came out and they were like oh, we're gonna have to ask for i wasn't a part of the very first campaign i got this on the second on the second print run but they were uh, it, it, like so they were communicating about all their issues. They were very upfront. They were constantly like letting people know these updates about what they were working on and the, and the problems they were having. They came around to saying that they were going to have to ask for more money, um, and they were like very remorseful in the way that they were even asking for it. And then the um, they I think they came around to actually figuring out a way to not have to ask for as much as they originally were. Mm -hmm. And everybody was just so happy with that communication that they. Um, it actually, got, I think it was one of the first games that started shooting up above uh, Gloomhaven on reviews, mm, kind of in yeah. an opposite way, where they were this so Mythic here is getting review Trashed, bombed yeah. for this this game because of how they were in a lot of its comparison because they're seeing other people going through the same of issues, course. but they're still able to kind of like still got love bombed versus the other one. Yeah, so the other the, yeah, so so the the people at uh, oh, what is it Shadowborn Games, uh, they. Uh, yeah, got got a lot more love for for just the way that they communicated, and man, it's like I feel bad because I see some some I see some really small creators sometimes, and they're making a game, and you can tell they're super stressed out. They've got issues that they're working through, and it may just simply be a time crunch. So they didn't realize how much time it's going to take for them to, yep. to develop a game, yep. and uh, and then they don't post any any updates, updates. for like three. Four months at a time. You know, you know in Mythic's then, case, it they makes made people it... so upset. All they got to do is put one little thing saying, "Hey, I'm working busy. really hard. I'm spending every day yeah. on this. I uh, apologize. This is where I'm at right now." Yep. I, and, and and that's all they'd have to do is at least a month. I think yeah, at the bare minimum, you got to do a monthly update when you're going through 
difficult times. You I, know, think, any, I think Mythic times. couldn't post updates because what they were doing was probably bad. <laughs> hey, they're, 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 they, were, they were taking money from one campaign to finish up another one. And that, that oh. chain, that, that chain doesn't ever catch up. Yeah, unfortunately, like, it seems that um, there's the last, you know... They the, couldn't put an update, hey, we took all the right. money you spent on that and, and finished yeah. uh, this other game You instead. know, you never know. <laughs> they we yeah, never know if that yeah. really happened, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's only speculation, right? The only thing that we can say, unfortunately, like, that, that we, we can all see from, like, their updates, the people commenting online, the, you know, the leaks, whatever, is that, unfortunately... They had some major issues with Darkest Dungeon, which was the campaign that was right before this one. As in, Darkest Dungeon came to sort of like production and shipment as prices of containers coming out of China during COVID just went through the roof. And that was the beginning of the issue because unfortunately they were like, hey, uh, before we could ship a container from China to the US for like $2,000 a mm -hmm. container and now it's costing us ten. Yeah. And you can imagine that when you're making board games, the margins are already pretty thin, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like, I don't I don't believe that anybody that makes board games has a private jet, Lamborghini, any of that stuff. Unless maybe it's the CEO of Asmodee, which is finance. <laughs> but <laughs> having said that, right, the, the, you know, that was the beginning of the issues for them because, of course, they suddenly had to find money to pay for the games to be shipped. And their approach at the time was not great because they basically had like, I remember there was this live stream or a recorded video it must have been a live stream because people were asking them on chat hey how do I get my game and they were like you gotta pay up like the games are stuck at a dock in China waiting to be loaded on a container mm -hmm. we need to get so much money to get it on and therefore you guys gotta pay oh if you don't pay the game stays in the docks how many China. times did they go back to the well for this one did you have to pay more once, or was it a couple of times? That's a good question. So I think Darkest once. Dungeon, they hit them like two, more than right. once. I think you're right. Like in this particular case, I don't know if they learned the lesson from Darkest Dungeon, or maybe not. But essentially what happened was this, that uh, the campaign ended in somewhere spring 21. Uh, my memory is weak, so forgive me. At some point in, like, so the game was supposed to deliver, like, early 2023. Mm. And then from September 22 until, like, January 23, never really, nobody heard anything on Kickstarter. No updates. No updates on Facebook. Nothing happened. So, eventually, they came up after people just complaining. Because we all know that Kickstarter can be... The Kickstarter comments section is great if things go well. And when things look like they may be just dipping... Scam! Yeah, <laughs> it's like they took my money and ran, and you're like, no, they didn't. They're, they're like working on it. No, it's my money. And like, oh, and then yeah. people coming up with all the crazy ideas. You should take them to court. Like, that doesn't work. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Having said that, <sighs> they came out and said, we're having some financial difficulties. We have to somehow find a way to produce this game. We need to sell some. They sold some IPs, which I'm sure wasn't easy for them because this is still like their work and love. It's not like Right. It feels that the people at Mythic Games really want to deliver the games that they've committed to deliver, right? Sure, they may have had some issues with money and some issues with managing the money. No questions asked there. Is it fair for them to come, to come back to you and say, hey, I want, you know, what you paid before. I need, I need more. I need just as much, if not more than what you paid originally because, you know, all these reasons. And then you're like, uh... It's a difficult one, right? Because yeah. in my case, I was in a financial position where I could just say, I'm going to take the hit because if I don't do it, I'm definitely not going to get it. If I do it, I may get it. I edge my bets and I thought, you know what? Let's do it. Click, turn away, and then forget about this completely. And then when yeah. the game showed up in the mail, I was like, what? Sweet, great, amazing. But at the same time, you got to understand that those people that when they did the pledge originally in 2021, they may have been in a different position than when, you know, like a year and a half later, the company comes back and say, hey, I want your money, I want more. Yeah. But uh, no, now they remember, we got hit once. Yeah. 
was it? Yeah. Or, um, just, or maybe, just, no, actually, yeah. no, sorry, no, we were hit twice. Like, the first uh, one was yeah. a few months after the campaign, because they had, like, an estimate shipping cost, and we paid that. That's standard, right? Mm -hmm. Kickstarter. Yeah. After a while, they tell you, this is how much it's going to cost to ship you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all the issues happened, and they were like, hey, here's, we need more money, here, please give us a lot of money. And you're like, eh, I, I will, because at the time I could. But, you know, this is a complex situation. You can understand why people are complaining, and so it's what, fair. So what was the option if, the, uh, if you were not able to fully back at that point? Did you just lose the money? Like, no. you were not going to get your money back? Like No, well, at that point? unfortunately, and fortunately, like, it seems that the company is somehow trying to find ways to give people refunds. Uh -huh. Although, you know, if you think about it, Kickstarter is not like that. You're not meant to get a get refund. You're not guaranteed a refund. No, right. no, but yeah, but then when you're, you're talking about the trust in the company and whether you're going to... Well, you no, may no, never no, do another, another campaign, yeah, but right, you're yeah. not guaranteed right, But that's the thing, yeah. like, people seem to forget that Kickstarters are not pre-orders, right? It's, it's true, yeah, and we've kind of gotten into this, this... I'm sure. It's kind of become a thing with the board game community where it kind of almost is seen like that because there are so many... It, and, and, and well-known companies. Uh, companies that are producing all these games and it is kind of like a pre and you are paying a little bit more usually too on yeah. kickstarter sometimes not sometimes you're getting a better deal um but you kind of are it's it's almost like uh you're getting the game before everybody else or you should be getting the game before yeah, well, everybody else does that's also uh, that's something that, questionable that, that's times. a whole nother thing about <laughs> that's a whole nother video yeah, right? that's yeah. another <laughs> so i i i have a little bit of history with uh, Mythic Games, and that I backed, I backed Solomon Kane at the time. It was the most expensive game I'd ever bought, mm -hmm. ever. Like even if you, even if you took my Call of Duty and every damn uh, pack I bought yeah. for the extra maps, I put all everything I've ever spent at, with the Xbox, yeah, yeah. <laughs> included, <laughs> included. Wow, okay. Uh, Solomon Kane uh, because it, it came out. Or it was it was, the the pro, the project came out and then it was like a year later they're like ah we're still working on this and everybody's like open the pledge manager back up <laughs> we'll buy more so, and I'd never had anything from Mythic before mm. it looked amazing it was like such a huge thing so I was like hell yeah and I went back in there and just bought everything like I I and in fact I think I went in like four times and just increased my pledge until until I just had all of it and. At the same time, like about a, a few months later, they did Reichbusters, the Reichbusters yeah. campaign. Remember that's that? One, that's the one of the one other one of the IPs they sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I got it, and it was somehow produced so much faster than Solomon Kane because there's not so much type. Like, Solomon Kane's like wall to wall text, you know. Yeah. So, right. um, so it came out uh, the pandemic hit. It uh, it was the first game I got after that pandemic, oh. and, and so I was like, "All right, you know, something to do while I'm sitting here at the house." <laughs> and uh, I opened it up, and it was just, it was a mess. It had like a million different chits, and it was like the opposite of this as far okay. as the iconography and the amount of little little bits and pieces and stuff like that. It was just lots and lots and lots of stuff, and then there was all kinds of problems in the rule books and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I and my big thought was. Oh my God! I've just spent that's a, that's a big thought. <laughs> I've just spent like what five hundred dollars or so on Solomon oh, Kane, yeah. and this game's just crap. <laughs> it's just a bunch of toys and yeah. stuff. I even oh, I painted gosh. like two models out of it, and I sold it. On, oh, I, I didn't oh, even geez. I I I set it up to play it. And I tried to learn the rules, and it was so convoluted and stupid. I just put it all back in the box and sold it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I never do that. Uh, like I usually give them a chance and stuff. I yeah. want to play it at least once. But I got my money back, and I was like, Psh. and then uh, <laughs> then Solomon Kane eventually came out, and it was, it's okay. Uh, it's 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 actually pretty fun, but it's not the kind of game that that's really for me. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm, sure. And it's not the kind of thing like I'm gonna pull it out maybe once a year and stuff. Uh, I painted. All of the core set, which is not an insignificant amount of things. Oh, you've seen this? Yeah. Uh, I'll never get to this. Yeah. Like, it's just so many. Oh, yeah. this is nuts. Yeah, maybe. This is nuts. <laughs> this is too many minis. You can paint this in, like, three months. You can? Yeah, with some dedication. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. I don't have that. All you yeah. got to do is not sleep. 
Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I've got that. that <laughs> that's down to a piece. you got a baby. So. I've got a baby, so that's... Uh, no, it's fine. Sure, I, I could see if they fine. were going to sell this to anybody. They sell it to Simon, let them just sit there and produce <laughs> the crap out of oh, those yeah. <laughs> but I, the I, But when it came... <laughs> so when Anastair came out, and then all these uh, other ones came out, I was I hate, done. I hate Simon. <laughs> okay. I, I, well, I, was already, I was already done with this by the time all this stuff came out. And I really liked the look of this game. I... I I have a thing for like little tables and like right, reset right. settings like this. Yeah. This. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a plastic pool table. I've I got to play on that. That's yeah. easy to paint. These, I'll give you that. Yeah, these things, like these, these, all, all these really cool little uh, doodads that come with it, I think it's just super cool. Mm -hmm. If you got this game, be happy. Play the hell out of it because it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And you're very uh you're a rare bird <laughs> yeah <laughs> because there's just not that many that, of these that things. that is one uh pro to the fact that this game is probably not going to be made anymore maybe it will you never maybe know, right? maybe it will on down the road it'll probably be a while you've got a very valuable game <laughs> as uh, far as it being I guess. a collectible item right. at that right. point well because, because it's, it's a good it's game a hard, it's well a good that's game, that's yeah. the thing yeah. right i agree with you on the fact that you know in terms of like print run this could be it for a long time yeah. Mm. Right? Because they've been pretty clear that they don't want to sell the IP. It's probably because the IP cost them a lot of money in the first place because mm. they had to deal with Ubisoft, which is a famous company that makes video games, and you can watch other YouTube videos about that. Mm. <laughs> but the the point being that I think they may want to do, you know, future runs of this and the you never know. You never yeah, know. Yeah, and, and 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 maybe all of the good reviews and stuff for it, because I'm sure it will get. You know, <sighs> aside from the other, you, I don't know. You, I don't know. You think it can get over the baggage? Well, uh, yeah. Okay, I, so I, I mean, because people will overlook, like, I mean, as far as when they're really wanting to get a feel for what the real gameplay is, if they're looking at a bunch of review bombs, like they're not gonna. They're, it does hurt it because it's like it's you know they see that they see that, but then they then they right. put that all back on the company, but when they. If people are actually being objective about looking at a game and seeing if it's a good game or not, they can look at this and say it's a good, you know, it's a good fun game. And if a lot of people have that, like the actual reviewers, like you know, like people that are actually going out and and, and putting you know content out about it, that are talking really well about it, it may get it may come back attention to. The only thing it. I can say is this: I think that the you know the number of games in the circulation is fairly small. Right, it'll mm -hmm. be divided all over all over the world or whatever. So, yeah. are enough copies reaching you know reviewers that are capable of sort of like uh, cleaning off you know the bad stuff from the game and just saying, hey, the past is the past. That's by the by. May take has made some mistake. People got angry. Everybody was right. Everybody was wrong. Move on with life. This is the game now. <laughs> this is the game that you can play, and. What do you think about just just take the game in isolation? You guys were not familiar with the original IP. You've never played the original video game, so how did it feel to you? Yeah, uh, well, I'll say like I've I played like the only Rainbow Six I played was like the old Rain Pro, Rainbow. Mean, Six, it's not yeah. Rainbow Six. Yeah, it this was, was. Yeah, yeah. This is six. This is Rainbow Six, six Siege. Siege. So and oh, the yeah. game it's is called, Six yeah. Siege. So I played Rainbow Six for the original Xbox. That was the last time I played it, and I haven't. I don't play very many first-person shooters these days. So that's as far as my experience of the game was, um, and certainly didn't play it in this like format, even digitally, where you're you're kind of two teams oh, going yeah, yeah. against each other like this. It gets more, really tense. It was more of a campaign that I was playing. I don't even know if it really had much of them. Uh, oh no, that was back original Xbox. So it, 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 there wasn't the one with the floppy disks, right? Yeah, well, you were probably like landlining <laughs> it to other <laughs> to other uh, Xboxes in the there's same a, uh, building. Um, a... Yeah, Toby's in, Toby has entered the, the space. <laughs> Hello. Um, but I I did feel like, especially putting the timer on the game, though, I feel like it did uh, simulate that pretty well that intensity of a first person shooter. I, I like that. Um, I played yeah. I played uh, the Call of Duty had a had a mode where you go in and disarm a bomb oh, right, and stuff. Okay. And I felt like that was like something where you assign duties to some of your people. Maybe, now nah, I think you just played on a team. I've never played anything video game wise like this, okay. but I really liked it. It feel, felt like something I would mm -hmm. do. I had to give up video games to paint. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> the bummer. That's, that's how I have time to paint. Is yeah, I, I don't I do play that. video games anymore. Nope. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I, and I, I, I find little spurts of them, but I'm usually playing games I can quit pretty quick, so I don't get too too addicted. And like, I'll get addicted for like a week to a game, and then I'm done wow. with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, the one thing it doesn't simulate is you're not aiming. You know, there's no, I mean, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So I mean, there's not that, but. But the general, the general experience of, of just rushing and doing uh, tactical combat um, and, and having to like make quick decisions, you know, that, that whole feeling, I think that, that plays itself out pretty well and translates pretty well as far as what the, the, the game is trying to do an emulation of the digital game, but it's not necessarily, again, you're not aiming down, you're not, <laughs> you're not they're playing a yeah, dexterity yeah. game. You're not throwing dice at each other. Uh, <laughs> Uh, which would be terrible as a video game. I mean, as a board game. Uh, well, it does have a super cool laser. I, I don't know. I don't know how you would emulate, like, actually, make, maybe, like, you have an actual dart gun and try to do that. Oh, you mean, okay. Yeah. Like, what, do you, what, would, you, what would you do? One you know, person holds uh, a piece of cardboard, the other one has to hit it with yeah, a dice. Yeah, you, you get an airsoft gun. and uh, <laughs> At that point, you just go outside and play yeah, real games, yeah, right? They, they yeah, you just play paintball. Yeah. Yeah. Go outside and touch grass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, like, I liked it. I like it for what it's doing. Right, um, I and would, I would totally be happy to keep playing it. Too. You know, my opinion is, I think I made it clear, is sure the game had history, yeah. fine. Sure, I would look at this, and even if it's now, you know, like, it's in my collection, and I'm not going to think about it just forgetting all the history. And when everybody asks me, it's like, oh, this you got this? I'm like, yeah, this was an interesting story, la 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 la. But game, like, the game, I think, is is really good. I think that for, put it this way, there's another thing that people have complained about online before the game got delivered. As in, they think it's taking my money. Oh, this is a scam. Standard, right? Standard, yeah, thing, standard yeah. friendly people. And then, oh, when we get it, it will look like crap. Oh, I've heard that the minis are just terrible. La, la, la. People just, you know, spouting nonsense. No. And when I, you know, got the game and I started popping all the components out, I was just like, they didn't have to go that far. Like this. Especially Looks since they were, they were running out of right. money, and then you know they didn't just get a bare bones right. game out; they got a high quality game out. That's why I say that you know I believe that Mythic or the people at Mythic really want to deliver still mm -hmm. high quality components, high quality games. And when they say that they're struggling, it's because you know let's face it, as I mentioned before, like sculpting minis takes time and money, and there's a lot of them, and then you got to make the molds, and you know, it's a process. It's expensive. Board games have become expensive, more expensive in time, sure. Mm -hmm. Plastic has gone up in price. Companies in China have up their prices. Shipping has gone up, you know, through the roof. So yeah. can you really hold it against them? And no, I think that, again, they could have delivered less in terms of, like, components and quality mm -hmm. of, of stuff, but they didn't. In my opinion, this is, out of, like, the 200 games I have or so, I can't. I know this is like a beginner entry level name number, but <laughs> yeah, right. this, this in terms of like miniature games that I have is definitely, if not the best in terms of like everything package, if not the best, it's almost there. No, I think this is, this is on par with claustrophobia and claustrophobia has less minis. Mm. And, and plus the minis here are functional. Think about, um, uh, dark, no. I'll have to come up with, I remember that, uh, not, uh, Gloomhaven, right, mm -hmm. great game, amazing game, you know, Gloomhaven is amazing, uh, but the board is, you know, interlocking rectangular tetroids, right, mm -hmm. you have minis, sure, for the main characters, the rest is cardboard standees, now they're having the campaign out with the, you know, have all the minis oh, made of plastic, oh, right, man. which is, and sure the enough. miniature, and I find the Too Gloomhaven much. miniatures to be pretty low res, they are, yeah, right, the miniatures in Gloomhaven, Look fine, look, you know, look board game fine. Yeah, yeah but, but they got really, the bendy plastic. I haven't really and, paid attention to their, their bigger campaign for because I was just like, I don't know, I don't know like, all that. I don't want all that. <laughs> like this much. guy, this Sorry guy has much space. optics on his rifle. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's Yeah, it's the wrinkles in their pants, you know, you've right. got all of the, um, I mean, everything. Yeah, you, now, you this is going to be a pain to paint because you got to make sure they look mm -hmm. different enough. Right, because these are all sure tactical gear. Okay, so all blue or green. No, you gotta spice them up a bit, which is why I'm never going to touch these. I may, pri <laughs> I may prime them. That's as far as I'm yeah. going to go, just to make them look decent. But yeah. having said that, um, another game that comes to mind, you know, with like tactical skirmishy things and minis, is Imperial Assault. Well, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. 
which makes its core business of buying expansions and extra characters. Yeah. Right? And the minis, again, they look good. Do they look this good? I'm not sure, mm -hmm. right? And that's a game where the minis are the part of the game, right? The, the, cru the crucial component. Here, it's better. That's that, right? Sorry. Well, yeah, Mythic has never had a problem with their components mm -hmm. or the quality, uh, well, for the most part. Sometimes they're printing errors and errata errors. Sure, that's that I heard. I heard but, it was like a Joan of Arc, which was famous. Oh, yeah, that's it. That was that's, them that too, was right? Yeah. The, so the version of first version of that yeah. one was unplayable. Yeah, apparently. there was like a version one and one point five. Then they did it. Yeah. so much about it. They're like, well, maybe we can sell some more if we just improve the rules. And they did it a one point five right. campaign. And yeah, stuff. I've heard. But uh, oh, I almost bought that too. But there the, we go. <laughs> but the um, yeah, he dodged it's, the wrong bullets. Man, they they it, it feels like they just were so uncompromising in the quality of this yeah. that they probably cost them a lot of a mm. lot of uh, resources. Yep. And, and, and because of that, maybe they overshot the moon just slightly. It's possible. Um, Unfortunately, the... You know, that combined with world crisis. Uh, so they kind of got hit two ways. So at the time, like with Darkest Dungeon, it was the containers that were so expensive. Yep, allegedly. And yep. then it flipped... Sometime last year, yep. and the last mile stuff became super expensive. Yep. So now it's it's really expensive once it gets to the hubs to come here mm, to the yep. point where like Robinson Crusoe is just sending out directly from Poland. Wow. Okay. Yeah, they're just <laughs> well, they're just mailing around. I think they had hubs point, in a couple of places. At that point, but. they can keep it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, my bad. Again, personal take. You can cut this out too. But Robinson Crusoe is one of the few board games that I've ever played. And I felt like I wanted to burn it. Like, oh, I wow. wanted to feel like the real really? Robinson Crusoe and just put, you know, this is really cold. I'm going to burn it. Oh, we had a good time. I, I couldn't it burn fun. it because it was a friend's boat uh, again. And uh, we still joke after like nine years because that's about how long ago I played it the first time. And I played it like five times, right? Yeah. Every time the first scenario because we never beat it. And we never beat it because like random occurrences. You flip a card like, Tiger comes out, you're done. And you're like, oh, great, this doesn't feel like deterministic at all. Uh, where's the skill of this? Oh, I'm gotta be like, I gotta believe in the heart of the cards. <laughs> no. We no. must have either cheated or got real lucky yeah, when we played it. You must we, have. we breezed right through it. Well, I'm happy for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the end of it, we did. Yeah, I got it's a little just, hairy, but it's, yeah, no. it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a silly survival I kind had, of thing where it's like. I had such a rough I, experience I, with it. No. Yeah, I think you almost expect on that game because it is a uh, uh, a cooperative game, though too that it's going to be like punishing and like Better. very. De <laughs> 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 Again, I'm not. This is this is me. You can. Oh, me. let's pull the focus back to yes. to, to six siege two. Yeah. Did, okay. Did, so did, it's. Did they? I got. I just one question. Did they use these from the video game? The pictures. From yeah. The, uh, well, characters? no. Oh, are these all, that's a good or question. Is this, is this uh, art that they paid somebody to do? All these characters. Or is this IP art? Oh right. Okay. So these look like the characters in the game, right? But when it comes to like the art style of the art, uh, I think like the fonts are the same or very similar. Mm -hmm. I believe the portraits. Are you know the ones you find in the game too? So they may have are just, they like directly drawn from I the think game so. or okay. like the names and everything. Oh no no no! Like ever like the names, the terminology, the items, oh, the I gadgets, mean, I, the I mean, special. I mean the uh, the the actual like you picture mean the of the characters. I yeah, think they are. I think they are. Cause I know some people get like kind of weird about that with like games taken for like and usually people that aren't you know like as I we I, we hadn't played the the the, the video game Sean or I hadn't. And so I don't have any reference for it, so mm. I'm just like, whatever. Uh, but I have seen some people where they're like, they, especially if they're not already fans of the game, and then they see like just direct digital, um, where they just right. grab the, the exact just ripping same. things out. They did that with, uh, Mon they did that with Monster Hunter. They, and I, I liked it, because I liked Monster Hunter, but they took the literal like pictures straight off of the 3D images really? of the, yeah, of the art of it, and they um, put it on there. Oh, well, wow. For... You know, based on memory, there's a you know during like the character selection of the of the operators in the video game when you're playing mm -hmm. it, you know you got all like all these, the characters and you got to choose the one you're going to play with. Uh, when you hover over the icon of the character, I think this image appears on the side. Okay. And that's just like a two D image. It's a portrait of the mm -hmm. character, so it's not like ripped from a three D model and then flattened. No, it's a portrait. But they, but they may have it. They may I think they lifted it from the 
from the video game, mm -hmm. but then again, like this is an official game, so I mean, it looks it looks That's, nice. They look uh, nice. And it, it, it's it, not it, as bad as movie it, art, and it looks better. It looks right. better too than like, and I can see the criticism that people had with the uh, Monster Hunter stuff because it was literally like a three D image of like the the weapon, like the three D oh, model. Okay, but then it's a flat image of the three D model. Yeah, of that's it. not wow. right. But like, yeah, I can see from a board gamer's perspective of oh, like uh, they I'm hadn't played the game. Yeah, they hadn't played the game. They just want like a board game, board game feeling, board game kind of thing. They look at that art and they go, ah, this looks a little hokey, like, like too <laughs> cheap in a sense because they didn't right. pay anybody else to do the artwork. But no, no, no. Uh, but like, this looks nice. This looks like it's painted at least. Right. Know, like the, painted these, these what do you pictures. see here? Like the maps are. Uh, there's a section in the game where you can sort of like see the maps when you're setting up the site. I can't remember, but basically like. This is definitely this has been done for the game. Like mm -hmm. the layout of the map is similar to the layout of the map, like of this particular map in the video game at the mm -hmm. time when this was designed, which was twenty twenty one. Because in the video game, sometimes things change. They update the maps because people, you know, play in a certain way, and they're like, no, we gotta make, you know, that road like that passageway wider. We gotta remove that one, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know, this is Siege is a live game. It's been going on for like nine years, and the developers keep doing things to the game because then they want to keep the community up and running. Sure. It's, it's a cash cow for them. So um, I believe that they did, uh, they hired artists to do all this. And even if, you know, even it, you still need somebody that just takes the original picture and integrates it into these, right. you know, mm -hmm. player character panels, right? Graphic design. And all right. That, yeah. So I bet that like they did get people to work on this. Like mm -hmm. these, sure, they look like the, uh, the Oh, the barricades, the not oh, right. the barricades <laughs> in the game, and, uh, and they may have taken you know like the original picture or the original like JPG file, whatever the company uses it, and just plastered it on. But I'm sure there's work that's gone into it. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, the quality of this, personally for me, is it's been it's incredible. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it all integrates really well from from my perspective of not. No, and the, you know, anything yeah. else about the game other than just seeing a board game, it looks like it all flows together pretty well. <laughs> so. It's probably the closest yeah. I've come to feeling like I'm sort of playing a shooter. video game, mm -hmm. uh, like a shooter game like that, mm -hmm. uh, inside of one of these. That wasn't a skirmish thing. Right. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this is fun. My, <laughs> well, my recommendation, <laughs> my, my vote in the end is out of 10... I am willing to give this, you know, I'm just, as I said before, I'm leaving out all the controversy, all the issues that I've had. Put those just a game. That if someone comes around, here's a game, have a go. Oh my God, this is amazing. Right, okay. This, to me, is a solid 8. 8 out of 10. Nice. It's, I struggle to go higher than that because I am you know, tend to be conservative in certain things. But yeah. like, considering the amount of, like, characters in the box, maps in the box, quality of tokens relatively relative ease to teach because yes it does take a moment to just go through the rules but otherwise easy to pick up yeah right think about games like i'm just going to quote my favorite horrible one um high frontier for all you guys have never played no. that great <laughs> it's a game about space where you have a board with all the potential orbits and i played it with two friends of mine once a couple of years ago because i got it because i had to have it long right. story and then we went through we played the cooperative game which is supposedly less horrible than the competitive like the competitive is really like you know cutthroat not mm -hmm. your teeth we played the cooperative game we think we believe we play like 20 percent of the game in terms of length in a, a 12 hour session oh wow right wow. and that was just because the game sort of goes like, yeah, every player has like three actions, but there's like 17 free actions you can do at the same time, and <laughs> all of them are incredibly complicated and messy, and it's just like, it's it's very sandboxy, that's the problem, yeah. which bogs everything down. I don't think, I don't feel like I, this, as we said before, without a timer, could take longer. The timer just kicks you. It's like, no, we got to get done in 60 minutes, either you like it or not, bam, 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 get done. Yeah, make your decisions. Now, yeah, if you don't, it's good practice for you. You get shot. <laughs> that's it. You're done. And then that's the beauty of it. You play a game, and then you reset in like five minutes, and then you go again. So you can get like a solid two games. Two uh, games. This is the type of game I can see. You you pull it out, and you would play it probably three or four times. 
Yeah. Sure. And and I and you know, I'd probably be in about the same boat as far as my you know first impressions of where I'm feeling at in the game is, uh, you know, comparing the quality and the actual experience that you're having with the game, it's probably right around that same range for me. It, just on initial impressions, a uh, big part of that is just that 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 component quality with the game. I think that that definitely adds to that rating quite a bit um, because it's 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 helping to immerse that experience that you're having with. This game that's like not, I mean, it, I don't know, there's a lot of tactical stuff in this game, but it's also not like this super, super strategy game either. It's like, you know, so it's, it's trying to, to, to create a feeling, and I think it's, I think it's... I think it nails it, yeah. It does what yeah. it's trying to do. I, I agree with you. I, I don't put numbers on my, yeah. um, on what I like, but I, I do, I'll give it like seven bullets. Seven bullets. Yeah. Seven you know, bullets. it's it's the kind of game like uh, if it had a normal production and stuff like that, I'd be really sad that I missed it and probably go find it immediately after mm -hmm. after playing it. I I like I had a really good time. Good. I, would, I would I would play this uh, any time. You know, mm -hmm. I, uh, this is right now. Yeah, this is one of those things that uh, uh, it's really it, once you pick it up, I feel like it's really easy to just kind of roll into yeah, it. I think because, so because you also don't feel like you're ha you're like when you are going to, to join into a game of this, you're, you you don't feel like oh I'm about to invest two three hours in a game. Yeah, break, like you've brain, got that, brain that hard like, timer. Right, let's go here and just rumble real quick and see what we happen. Uh, the, having some guarantee that the game isn't going to go for six hours mm -hmm. is really a nice and refreshing for I, me. I know, right? Because <laughs> we, we'll play even like really simple games that'll say they're an hour and a half on the box and it's like, wow, how did the six hours go by? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, as Owen mentioned before, there are games that, you know, there are skirmish games that are good and takes a while to play. There are time games that are silly and they have a determined amount of time they last, but they're silly. Mm. This is, in my opinion, it's like, again, very niche, because the theme is very, you know, very specific. This is not fantasy. This is not like, you know, space. Mm. This is terrorists and counter-terrorists shooting each other inside the building, trying to defuse bombs, trying to free hostages. How many people like that kind of stuff? Uh, it depends, right? Some, for sure, at least 4,000 people, because they pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and not one of them. Um, but at the same time, like, the you know there's a subgenre of like two player games the subgenre of like this being some realistic military sort of like you know with superpowers mm. tactic right yeah. there's yeah the tactic element there's a subset of being a mini game there's all these subsets but i think that you narrow it down enough and you get to the core of this game which is two player mini blah 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 and at that it's great that's it mm. yeah yeah i think that's probably all I got to say that I and think we, we we've gone. <laughs> this is probably an hour long video. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we normally do twenty minutes, but we had a Sorry. lot to say. We had a lot to you say might, about might, this. Might as well just say it's a mythics discussion video as well. Yeah. yeah. Oof, yeah. Harsh. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to cut those things out and make another video. Well, uh, well yeah. yeah. Nah, nah. Yeah, just throw it together. Well, time codes. <laughs> time codes for all that. <laughs> people like to hear this sometimes. That's true. And right. folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Paulo, thank you for coming over and showing okay. your really cool game. Owen, thank you for coming over and hanging out again. It's always easy when Sean's recording. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to see more reviews, Owen and I tend to do this quite a lot. There's a, there's a playlist right here. Be sure to subscribe to our channels because we'd love to see you again. And tune in again <laughs> for more videos. Until next time, enjoy your games, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, oh, Toby! <laughs> Toby! <laughs> Goodbye! Oh, God! Oh, There's shit. a screen there. I'm like, oh uh, shit, is it going up? Okay, me? okay. I thought, okay. I was, let's let's I, go out of the screen. I literally thought he jumped out the window for a second. <laughs>